you for honoring the Lord, the office as a pastor. Um, it's not about me. It's about God. And so we give God the honor and give him the glory and all the praise that's due his name. Amen. Um, it's, it's good to see everybody. Uh, my mom would say the liquid sunshine, uh, how it's raining uh, on today. And so thank God for his liquid sunshine. It's the rain. Uh, it rains on the just and, on the, and the unjust, and he sends his rain. So we thank God for the rain. As I was growing up early in, in church, there's a song by a gentleman by the name of Carmen. And I, uh, someone else wrote it. I don't know who wrote it, but it says, Lord, send the rain. Pour out your spirit. Let your fire fall. Heal us one and all. Fall afresh on me. And I don't know about you all, but I want the Lord to fall afresh on me. I, I need the Lord. I need the Lord. And, and that's a song. It's the old school song that dropped in my spirit on this morning. Well, the sound works. It dropped in my spirit on this morning. And um, as I was back there, we're just going to sing it really quickly. Or we're, we're going to sing. I'm not how sure, sure how long we're going to go. But it says, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. And so... I'm reminded even with those lyrics that as Peter was walking on the water and he began to sink and drown, uh, well, it wasn't drowning just yet, I don't think, but he was sinking and about to go under the, you know, he said, Lord, save me. And he says, he said, he stood in need, said, I need help. Lord, save me. And it's important that we reach out and say, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. I don't have it all. I don't have all the answers, but what I do know is I need you. So the song says, I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour, every hour, I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee, I come to to thee to thee one more time i need i need thee oh i need thee every hour i need thee every hour i need thee oh bless me now my savior Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee, I come to, to thee, hallelujah, we praise your name, Jesus, hallelujah, have your way in this place today, God, as we say that we need you. God, we stand in need of your word today, Father. Yes. We understand that we don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth from your mouth. Yes. God, we come, God, some in just being all right, some are being challenged some today, God. But whatever we are at, Father God, we realize that we stand in need of you. God, there are situations that we cannot fix ourselves. We need you to do this, God, so we humble ourselves today hey we surrender our will to you father not our will but your will be done god so in this moment if there's anything that we've done that's been out of order out of line god we call so to speak that 1-800 number we call the manufacturer and we say oh i'm out of order i need help so you are our manufacturer you are our creator are the one who made us the guy so some of us have been out of order there's an out of order sign on our life that people have been trying to put coins they've been, they've been trying to get what they're supposed to get but it has not been working we've been trying to do some things that's been out of order and it has not been working some of us so god today we say i'm out of order and i need you to fix it i stand in need of you father so have your way in the name of Jesus so please forgive us for any wrongdoing God we want to be clean in your sight and we want to gladly receive your word today we want to mix your word with faith so we can walk out your word today God we need to hear from you God not from man but from you God so as John the Baptist said I decrease right now so you can increase Jesus in this place today 
have your way in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that that we'll be doers of your word and we won't forget the word that we, what was preached today, God. That we will walk out your word, that we won't be like just church goers and say, I went to church and check, I feel good about myself. No, God, but we can, we can hear your word and then do your word this evening. We can read your word and reflect on the word tomorrow, God. We're not just church goers, but we are disciples following after the will of Christ. So have your way in us, with us, and through us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning to good, good morning to everybody once again. Uh, good morning. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we thank God for God. Um, Mother Wilson is watching this morning all the way in Kalamazoo. So good morning to you, Mother Wilson. It's good to see you on uh, before you're making your way to your church as well. Amen. 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 Um, hallelujah. Yes, uh, we're praying for Mother Adela. Uh, that yes, the rain uh, may have delayed her, and so she may not be able to be here today. But we're we'll continuing to pray for her. Amen. Amen. Um, we are excited about what God is doing. He's an on-time God. Yes, He is. Amen. He may not come when we want Him, but He's right on time. Today, the Bible says, "If we harden, if we hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your hearts." I believe that God has not led you in this place today. For an accident. I believe that if you're watching online, if you're here today, that God has something to speak to you, that it's not too late to get things right, that we can surrender our will to him. Because I don't know about you, but I have not made myself. God made me. And if there's certain things going on, I need to go to God and say, God, what do you want me to do next? God, what's the order of the day? Father, do I proceed? Do I wait? God, there's a situation that I don't know how I'm going to get out of it unless you fix it. So fix it, Lord. Oh, fix it. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So I'm excited on today. I'm excited on today. Um, amen. So we have some announcements. Shekinah, if you can take us to the Google Slides, uh, you can pull that up. And we have a few announcements that we're going to share with you all. Um, and so and we're going to continue. Um, let's see. Let's see. Father, how do you want us to proceed? All right. So school is going to get started here pretty soon. So continue to pray for the students as they get ready to go back into school. We have about a little less than a month here in our area. Uh, so continue to pray for the students and the teachers. Amen. Um, we have a slide uh, coming up. Uh, Sister Rosemary, good to see you. And then we have a slide coming up um, that Bible study. So last week we have Bible study that's on the slide it says last Wednesday was July 24th. And so this is the upcoming schedule uh, that my work schedule is kind of uh, going back and forth. So we're going to do like Bible study, no Bible study. Bible study? No Bible study. So we had July 3rd. Uh, last week we had Bible study. On um, this coming Wednesday, no Bible study because work scheduling. Um, August 7th, the first Wednesday in August, we have Bible study. That following week, no Bible study. The first week of school, August 21st, we'll have Bible study. And then the last month, uh, last week, there'll be no Bible study. So every other Wednesday, we'll be meeting. So uh, just so you know, um, we had some series that we've been walking in. Then we were just meeting consistently for Wednesdays and then a summer schedule, work schedule. So thank you for being flexible with our, our meetings uh, on Wednesdays. And so once again, um, last Wednesday we had Bible study, but this Wednesday we won't. So kind of going back and forth every other Wednesday. Okay, someone say every other Wednesday. That's a good way to remember it. So every other Wednesday, starting in August, we'll be having Bible study. So this coming Wednesday, no Bible study at seven o'clock. But then the following Wednesday, the first Wednesday in August, will be Bible study. And man, we'll do our best to post this online as well on our Facebook page. We uh, Facebook page works better for us. Um, I I we had a website, but it wasn't being used as much, and we wanted to conserve money and just be wise with our, our funds. And so we didn't renew our website. Domain hosting privileges in Facebook serves the same purpose for what we need right now. Uh, and so I need to amend some things. It says Arise. Our website was arisecm.org. And so we don't have that at the moment, but we had it for a long time. All right, next slide. Um, be our guest. Be our guest. If you know of anyone that wants to come, you can grab a few uh, uh, flyers on the way out. We have some 
uh, invitations just to hang with people, have some in your vehicle, or just keep a few with you as a little removal upon your heart. Say, hey, what you doing this Sunday? Well, I don't know. If you get a chance, come worship with us. We'd love to have you be our special guest. And so uh, that is one of the flyers we have for the ministry. Anyone can take one and share those with people you may know. And finally, the last announcement is um, our, just our archives of our videos. Good morning, Miss Tiffany. Good to see you. Uh, continue to be faithful to what God's called you to do. Amen. Let the haters hate. Okay. And sometimes you don't have to speak to the haters. Just let the haters hate. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Amen. Um, so we have an archive of videos. And so we've been, uh, some people said, man, why are you still going online and, and doing videos? And well, that's what God said to do. And we're going to continue, continue to do it until he says, stop. Okay. So, uh, we have an archive of videos on our Facebook page and we're also on YouTube. We're also on YouTube in case anyone didn't know. So if you happen to miss a message or if you want to meditate back on the word that you heard, or sometimes you can hear it differently because maybe in a different circumstance, uh, these are, are things you can do. Uh, you can listen to as you're working, as you're working out. What I do on my YouTube, sometimes I just listen to different uh, messages and I'll close my phone, but it still plays because I invested like the, 10 or 12 dollars to have youtube premium so anyway but there it's it's been a great tool to be able to have so this is our archive videos we've had the last two years on our facebook page or since covid the last three years i may say and then also um just various things on our youtube page okay i do want to bring it to the attention last week or last wednesday i don't know about you but that might need, need to be a word that you want to hear uh last wednesday we talked about what was it I want my whole family saved. That's what we talked about last week. Part two. I want my whole family saved. Part two. Part one was, was I think, January 21st or somewhere in January was part one. And then we did a part two uh, last Wednesday. I want my whole family saved. Anybody want the whole family saved? Yeah. Believe in God, oh, yeah. walk it upright before the Lord. I want my whole family saved. And one of the things that we talked about was before you want your whole, before you get your whole family saved, you have to first make sure that you're saved. Right. I don't know if you ever, brother, uh, brother uh, Troy, I'm not sure if you've ever flown in a plane, but they uh, they tell us when you fly on a plane, make sure that if the, something happens, there's turbulence or something's happening on the plane where it's maybe it might be going down and the oxygen mass comes out. They said, make sure that you secure the oxygen mass for yourself first. If you have little ones and then take care of your little ones, because you want to make sure that you're able to. They breathe what you, properly so you can work with the little ones, not trying to work with the little ones and then you, whatever happens, and then you're out and then you can't save your little one, right? So the same analogy, I want my whole family saved. I want to be saved first, right? I want to make sure that I'm saved, I'm delivered, I'm set free, I'm trusting God, and now that I'm clean, I can also be a light and share with others and, and pray because when we're not saved, God does not hear our prayers unless it's a prayer of repentance. So uh, when we're out of the line of, uh, of God, if it's, God bless my family. Well, how can I bless my family? You're thinking I can't hear you because you're in sin. He, sin separates us from God. So he can hear that prayer of repentance, but when we come under the blood of Jesus, when we for, uh, ask God to re, uh, forgive our sins, then we're in alignment. Then he can hear our prayers. And so we talked about different uh, examples from the word of God this past Wednesday. So if you want, you can go back and review that and let that minister to you. Uh, that was this past Wednesday. I want my whole family saved part two. All right. I think that's it. Uh, we've been um, talking about. Uh, we've been in the book of Revelations. Revelation, we've gotten to uh, Revelation chapter 9. And so, uh, Shekinah, I didn't say that. Um, Father, do we go there? Just for continuity's sake, we're going to go to Revelation chapter 9. But we're going to branch off from there. Revelation chapter 9. Amen. Uh, my dear brother, uh, I hear the Lord saying, Brother Troy, uh, just continue to walk by faith. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Amen. Amen. And so when you walk by faith, it's not necessarily about the things that um, that come up in our mind or in our that we see. You know, we, we'll walk by faith. We believe God. And so we walk by faith. I remember when just another example, but a huge example in our life when the doctor said that we couldn't have a baby. And this is not your situation, but when the doctor said that we couldn't have a baby, 
um, we chose to believe God and walk by faith. And there's things we put into place to show God that I believe there's things that we do to say, you know what? Thanks, doctor, for that wisdom that you had. But that's your wisdom. I believe in God. Now you're practicing medicine. Thank you for your practice. But I choose to go to my higher physician. And so there's sometimes we're dealing with situations where it doesn't look the best, but we can see that, OK, that's what I choose to see. But I'm walking by faith and I'm going to trust God to believe. And as we walk by faith, we begin to buy diapers for our daughter. As we walk by faith, we begin to buy clothes for her. As we walk by faith, we begin to call her name to the atmosphere. We said, Shekinah, come here. Shekinah was in heaven. <laughs> she wasn't even here yet. But we begin to call her name by faith and begin to walk by faith and believe God, even though the situation wasn't what we wanted to see. Even though the doctor said that if we would get pregnant, that we would miscarry. And so we went through that. But we, and even in the midst of going through hurt, even through the midst of going through pain, even in the midst of being angry at God and said, God, now we have we just found out that we are pregnant. And now the baby is with you in heaven. God, that hurts. And being vulnerable with the Lord and just, you know, just talking to him, to him, but yet still having to trust him. It's not about what we see. It's about what I see by faith, what I walk by faith. And as we continue to walk by faith and speak the word over our situation. One of the scriptures I spoke over, over my over my wife was uh, that my child shall be great in the sight of the Lord. She shall drink neither strong wine or drink and shall be filled with the Holy Spirit from her mother's womb. That's in Luke chapter one or two. That's a scripture concerning John the Baptist. But I, I spoke that scripture and quoted that scripture and stood on the word of God. So what does that mean? That we can all walk by faith. It's not about what we see. What we see tells us something, but also at the same time, we don't have to accept that per se. We can choose to believe. OK, God, this is what I believe. I walk by faith, not by sight. So as I was going to the word, I heard this brother walk by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Walk by faith. Revelation chapter nine. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for my wife of 24 years. Amen. We honor you. We thank God for your faithfulness. When I was being hard headed, nappy headed, you won't believe that right now. But uh, she uh, still stuck by me. There are things I was doing that was out of order. There are things I was doing that that uh, was out of character. There is things that when I would say, but not say when I was say trying to play say, but I really uh, had uh, this was in my own little crazy area. That she she continued to pray for me and she believed God even when I was uh, a college dropout. Amen. She, uh, I, I was uh, making minimum wage at five twenty five five dollars and twenty five cents back in the day. <laughs> that was challenging. <laughs> but she stuck God believe and, and stuck with me. And we thank God for her faithfulness as unto the Lord. Amen. So uh, thank God for each and every one of you uh, for being here. We don't count it as light. Thank God for you online as well. Let's go to the word of God. And so, Lord, help me read this. I don't want to rush through this. I don't want to take too long. I do want to say this, that we're going to just, just, just talk and walk. And so if you do have to leave, that's OK. Uh, we understand that. Um, but we're not going to rush it. We're going to share the word. Now, I don't believe here in being all here all day, but at the same time, we're just going to go through. Uh, you all have for those that may not know, we make sure that we try to be a good steward of everyone's time. And then when we do go along, it's because the Lord is leading us. OK, and so it's not because that Pastor David wants to talk. Many of you know that if I just get in the place where I'm talking, I want to sit down and put my wife up. So I just don't talk to be talking because I've been in those type of ministries where I mean, Pastor, we got the word sit down you know and so i want to make sure i'm cognizant of that all right so let's look at revelation chapter 9 verse 1 and it says this and the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit i'm gonna stop there quick recap we've been walking in revelation for the past few months going from revelation chapter 1 all the way to revelation chapter 9 and we talked about the seven churches of Revelation. And we talked about that in Revelation chapter two, chapter three. We also spoke about those churches that of are of the synagogue of Satan. They say they're Jews, but they're not. They're of the synagogue of Satan, according to Revelation two and eleven and Revelation three and eleven. We also spoke about the appearance of Jesus and what he looked like. Amen. And we talked about why Paul, I mean, why John, the apostle, was even on the island of Patmos. We also dealt with where the churches were in kind of the Turkey, Greece, Turkey area. So we walked through that. 
now we're at the point where remember we talked about th that uh the lord uh, a lot of angels take john up into heaven by vision not vision the avenger but in a vision <laughs> and uh and he saw there was a seal there was a scroll and and some of, someone was supposed to open the scroll but no one was found worthy enough to open the scroll except who jesus someone say jesus there's power in the name of jesus say jesus Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's Jesus. So it's important that we honor his name. No one was found worthy even to open the scroll that was going to be pronouncing judgment upon the earth except Jesus. It was a lamb that was slain. The line of the tribe of Judah, the root and the offspring of David. So we talked about that. And so the scroll that Jesus opened, the lamb opened in heaven. The scroll began to lay out, and we talked about the, the, uh, the, the, so to speak, the four horsemen, the, the red uh, the horse, the pale horse, the black horse, and the uh, white horse, and so forth, and things that were releasing. We spoke about the angels, uh, and so this, we even spoke about the 144,000. So we've been dealing with some things that the, uh, those, that, and the martyrs. So we've talked through, through some things. Where we're at now with the fifth angel is the seventh seal. Someone say seventh seal. So the seventh seal that was open and of those seven seal, seven angels begin to blow their trumpet. If you go back to Revelation chapter nine, I mean, chapter eight, seven angels blew their trumpet. I mean, so seven angels, but the first four blew their, their trumpet one at a time. And there was things that were released. And remember in Revelation chapter eight, I believe verse 31 or so, the last couple of verses, the angel said, whoa, whoa. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other trumpets that are about to sound by these last three angels. So this is the fifth trumpet. Or it was 13. I said 31. I got to transpose. I'm sorry. Revelation 8 and 13. And so this is the fifth trumpet. So at this fifth trumpet, he saw a star fall from heaven. And we talked about what that was. We did a whole uh, a whole teaching on a star that fell from heaven and onto the earth and to him was given the bottomless pit so the star was a, a male so we did a teaching on that we, we talked about that as the lord broke out revelation to us about the star that fell that was a a male and it actually it was an angel okay and let's continue so all that we've talked about it was the key to the bottomless pit now let's proceed now that we're caught up we did a quick recapping let's proceed in verse two and it says he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded in verse four them that they should not hurt the grass. That sorry, I just I paused for a second because I was, was reminded of Revelation seven when it talked about hurt not the earth nor the sea nor the pe pe people under the sea until everyone had been sealed the the living the servants had been sealed in the foreheads and we saw we even talked about the seal of the Lord versus the seal of Satan the mark of the beast so we dealt with that a little bit as well um so I was kind of lost in that thought as well so let's read for again and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So the locusts are kind of given the command, don't hurt any, the earth. Don't eat the, the, the grass, what you're used to eating. Don't do that. Don't, don't hurt anybody except those that do not have the seal of God in their forehead. Those that have not committed and surrendered their life to him. Those who, don't, who, have not, who are not living for Jesus, he said, you can go ahead and hurt them. Okay, and verse five, and to them it was given that they should not kill them. So the locusts don't kill them, but that they should be tormented for how many months? For five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion, which he striketh a man. Verse six, and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shape of the locusts were like the horses prepared unto battle and on their heads wore crowns like gold. We'll deal with this later if the Lord allows. Um, let's jump down to, uh, 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 let's jump down to verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue was Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his, his name was Apollyon, which kind of means destroyer, destruction. 
Okay. Um, and even if we look at verse 12, one woe is past. So that was the fifth woe. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Verse 13, and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying, the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And verse 15 is where we're going to stop for right now. And it says, and the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month. And a year. Why were these angels made or prepared? They were prepared to do what? To slay the third part of men. Mankind. Huh. Well, we want to stop today and talk about, and we're going to read all the scriptures, of course, but I wanted to tie in where we've been at, Brother Troy, with Revelation to what the Lord put on my heart, Brother Mark, is talking about the wrath of God. Today we want to deal with the wrath of God. The wrath of God. Yes, ma'am. So that woe mm -hmm. in my Bible, it says the horror. So the first horror is done, and there's two more horrors to come. Wow. The first horror, horror. is horror, right? Yeah. So like horror, when you think of horror, you don't think of a good thing. You still think of something scary. Right. The horror. The first horror, terrible thing is done, horrendous. And the two more are up. Yes. To slay the third part of men, verse 15 said. So here's some questions I just want to ask us as we talk about. Some questions I had initially. Remember Genesis 6. And we talked about Genesis 6 last week. Remember what we talked about last Sunday? Last Sunday we talked about the fallen angels. And we talked about the Nephilim. And we dealt with demons. right? And so if you were, yeah, that, you, we've been kind of going pretty deep as the Lord has sh shared us. But remember, as we talked about last week, there's nothing to be scared of because God has not given us a spirit of fear. Also, talking about that we have victory, thanks be unto God who always caused us to triumph through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we've been given commands to cast out demons, that just so we can speak to those things in the name of Jesus. And we gave examples of how Jesus did that, and then examples of how uh, his disciples were given charge to do that using the word of God in the name of Jesus. So, all right. So where are we at, Father? So we talked about the woes and the hordes. The question I had, Genesis 6, it's like, man, God, why did God wipe out all humanity? I mean, this is, you, can, you can talk back if you want to. You, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But it's a question, like almost like a rhetorical question. Again, if you don't want to answer, you don't have to. But because I'm going to tell you the answer eventually. Why did God uh, uh, wipe out humanity? Why did He wipe out humanity and save eight, as the Bible talked about? And so that's one. You might have that answer. Okay, don't tell me just yet if you want to speak, because I'm going to tell you eventually. And then another question I had was, as growing up in the faith, God. Once the, the, the Israelites, you part of the Red Sea and you took them through the, 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 the middle of the Red Sea and took them to the wilderness and eventually you took them to the promised land and you told them to kill everybody in the promised land. Don't leave anybody alive because now that's the promised land. They're the people of Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gergeshites, the Jebusites and all those ites in Deuteronomy. They were supposed to be killed. Why would God Tell his people to do that. Because I don't know about you, but I've heard, let's go there. Uh, Shekinah, let's take us real quick. Now we're just kind of jumping around as the Lord leads. Let's take us to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse 6. Uh, we're going to look at verse 7. And it says this in our hearing, as you have it, it says, Beloved, let us love who? One another. For love is of who? Of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For verse 8, the part B of verse 8 says what? For God is love so John is kind of the first John is between like what after Hebrews and somewhere before Revelation 
For God is love. Has anybody ever heard that? God is love. Yes. But one, they don't read the other parts of the verse, verse 7 and verse 8. I mean, the first part of verse 8 and then also verse 9. So we hear, for God is love. For God is love. So then that has to that comes that used to come into in play when you know thinking about first John again first John chapter four verse eight for God is love as I asked the question why would God wipe out all humanity uh in Genesis chapter six except Noah and his kinfolk well Noah and his immediate family because some of those kinfolk didn't make it uh why would God command the, the, the children of Israel to kill all those that were all already occupying the promised land. Why would God do that? If God is what? Love. Hmm. Okay. Why would God, why would God, uh, what's another thing I consider? Oh, even now, God, reading Revelation, what we just read in Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. Why would God wipe out or a third of men if God is love and we read before also that uh, I think a fourth part of, of, of mankind was going to be wiped out in various things that were released why would God do that if he is love I'm glad you asked <laughs> I'll tell you the answer all right so the answer let's let's, let's look look back at verse 7 um, it says beloved let us love one another for love is of God so that one another is speaking to the believers. It's speaking to the body. It's speaking to those who are of the way. It's concerning Paul was writing this epistle to believers. He was, wasn't writing to those that weren't saved. He was writing to those that were walking with, uh, not Paul, but John was writing this to those who were believers. Mm -hmm. He was writing, and you can uh, you can take reference from that in First John one and one. So John was writing to believers. So love one another mean love fellow believers, not just love those who are you know. People say love your neighbor as you love yourself. You were supposed to be good to everybody, right? Love people, but at the same time, that scripture is that neighbor is not just anybody you see across the nation. The neighbor was those that was in community in fellowship. The neighbor back in, well, even in our day, neighbor, a lot of times referred to someone that's, that's um, next door to you. Someone that's next door to you, maybe behind you possibly, or someone in your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. In your vicinity. Your neighbors. So the neighbors were, for the children of Israel, those in the encampment. Those that were of their family, the believers, the Israelites, that's who God was speaking to when he told them, love your neighbor as you loved yourself. He also had a word for strangers who were strangers. Strangers were those that weren't a part of their neighborhood. Those that were maybe of other nations. When they came in and said, y'all be kind to the strangers. And if there's some that are wanting to, uh, to, as a matter of fact, when you pick up the harvest from your field, leave some for the strangers and the widows, those that are coming behind you. Take care of them. Treat them kindly because why? You were once strangers in someone else's land. So, I mean, we can go deeper than that, but I wanted to, to break down a, 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 a distinction with who he's talking to when he says, love your uh, a neighbor and love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. For love is of God. So God gives love. And everyone that loveth is born of God. But people have used that for, hey, you can't judge me. God is love. And if God is love, he knows, uh, I've heard this used before, that uh, same-sex couple says, well, I love them and they love me, so God is love, so why are you trying to judge me? God gave me this love. No, nah, you got to twist it. That's per what, he, what you have is perversion. All right? You might have a feeling, but that, that is not of God. That's perverse, and we've dealt with that before. So, go back to the question. Why would God allow this uh, destroy the world in Genesis 8 with the flood or Genesis 6 with the flood and save eight people? Why would God destroy the Gebusites and the Jebusites and the Hittites? And, uh, why would God destroy a third of mankind? It's a pretty it's a pretty clear answer to me because of sin. Because of sin in the world. Because of sin. That's it. Okay? So, God has emotions. One of the emotions that we read here is love. God, 
What does Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 says? Happy way, Father. What does Genesis chapter 3 16? Can anybody say it from memory? If not, uh, not Genesis, John, John 3 16, John 3 16. I said Genesis, John. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son. Let's go back to that first part. For God so love the world God loves God is love one of the emotions that God exhibits is love love we're going to put this right here love so God loved us while we were yet sinners for God loved us right he loved us uh, why do I love him because he first loved me he loved us so God exhibits love okay let's talk about love for a second let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and you can be taking those notes if you if you I encourage us to take notes but also you can go back and listen to this word to jot some things down as well Ephesians 4 uh, verse 14 so God is just because God is love that doesn't mean he, he puts a rubber stamp of everything oh I love you Miha. I love you son he doesn't rubber stamp everything because he loves us no that's not love what people have put upon God that says it's love is not love. Right? So we're talking about that today. Exactly. Just like parents. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. It says, Then henceforth, we be no more or be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So we've been deceived. Some of us have been deceived. I've been deceived by the tricks of the enemy through the propaganda of media. And that's things that have been put out there by the enemy. All right. But speaking the truth, what? In love. So if you love, you'll speak the truth in love that we may grow up in him of all things, which is ahead, even Christ. So as believers, even God, going back to God, God will speak truth. His word is truth. And we can't just read the things that we like and mark out the things that we don't like in his word. We have to obey everything, right? We have to obey the word of God. And if there's things that we read in the word of God that are challenging for us to obey, ask him for his help. Don't run for it, from it. Run to him and say, God, you already know my heart. You know my thoughts. There's this thing that, that I'm having trouble with. I need you to help me. Show me how to do it, Father. Help me to be obedient, not to run from it, but to run to it, to run to him. So we speak the truth in love. So as believers, we speak the truth in love. Now, sometimes we have to kind of discern when to tell people the truth, and whether, it be, whether it's blunt or whether we wrap it up like in a sandwich, put a little bit of a, a nice part, put a little bit of truth and come up with a nice part again, or whether we just give them the meat and just be truthful, right? So we dress it up sometimes or sometimes we're blunt, but we speak the truth in love, but we have to discern when to do that. All right. So. I want to read this. Uh, Pastor Mary mentioned it in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6, talking about love. God is love. You're right. God is love. But God speaks the truth in love. Hebrews 12, 12 and 6 in the New Testament. Hebrews is after John, after 2 Corinthians, after Galatians, after Colossians. And now I find Hebrews. Hebrews 12 and 6. Hebrews 12 and 6 says this. Mm -mm. All right, five is good too, but we're not going to read five right now. Six says, "For whom the Lord loveth, he does what? Chasteneth. Who he loves, he chastens and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, verse seven, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Chasing means to correct." Sometimes correction comes with a belt, brother. Sometimes it comes with a sp spanking or a chocolate. All right. Sometimes it comes with a, a pop on the forehead, as my mom used to do me right here. He's like, come here, boy, come here. Yes, Bill. And I would come. Because you know, mm. <laughs> I was doing wrong. Chasing in that correction. Good time out. Well, time out. And I better not ask why. If I was, yeah. That was, I didn't grow up in the generation of talking back. I'm just saying. All right. And but change, you correct those whom you love, because if you're not correcting your children, they're going to grow out to be someone's going to correct them. Put it that way. If you don't correct them, someone's going to correct them. They might grow up in the judicial system or they might go out in the sin. At the last, you know, we have to be able to be found guilty of speaking truth and correcting our children. The Bible says he chastened those whom he loves. So God is love, but yes, God also love that same love that God has for us will also correct us if we allow it to. Yes. 
It may, it may not feel good. I was say, don't feel scourging. Good. When I think of scourging, I think of whew, doesn't feel good. Jesus walked into the temple and he was whipping folks. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> he was, but out of love. He said, look, y'all don't turn my father's house into a den of thieves. I'm going to correct you. And by this correction is, yeah, right? He, he took care of business. He drove them all out, brought correction. Didn't feel good, but he brought correction. He chastens those who he loves. Proverbs 3 and 11 talks about that. You can take us to, to that really quickly. Proverbs 3 and 11. Proverbs 3 and 11 talks about chastening. I'm not sure if you ever heard of spoil the, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. That's in the Bible. But the rod is not always a rod of physical, right? The correction can just be, come here. I told you to stop. Now go sit down. That's correction as well. Yeah, we've had to correct Shekinah kind of before. And oh, she almost got corrected last night. I'm just going just to leave it at that. All right. <laughs> but she was cool. She was cool. But we have to make sure that we're saying what's best for our children what our, for, because it brings it's in order and we love them. The Bible says, my son, despise not the chastening of who? Why is the Lord chastening? Why does he chasten us? We just read it because he what? Loves us. He chastened those who he, who he, he loves. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be weary of his correction. All right, so don't run from the correction of God. Run to it. Good morning, Sister Virginia. Virginia. Yes, have a wonderful day. Amen. Continue to trust God. Amen. Continue to trust God. It's important that we surrender all or the baggage that, we, that we're carrying and give that over to God. Yes. Brother Troy, there's a backpack in my office. If you don't mind going to get that really quickly, you might have to zip it up a little bit so things don't fall out. But it's a black backpack. I'm sorry to get you out of, out of uh, thank you, but thank you for your, your help. So he chases those who he loves. God is love, but God's going to bring correction. He's also going to speak the truth. Okay. So love is one, ex one example. Let's go to, um, uh, what's the scripture father that you're telling us? Um, there he goes, uh, right here in front of me. Exodus chapter 34 and six, Exodus chapter 34 and six. Exodus chapter 34 and 6 is Genesis Exodus. So just talking about the emotions of God for a sec. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Awesome. Genesis chapter 34 and 6. Not Genesis, Exodus chapter 34 and 6. And before we read that, sometimes we carry weight on us. God wants to help us with that weight. He wants us to give over that weight so we can take over his burden or his weight. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I don't, huh, this is my backpack. I've had all this weight. I'm comfortable with, it, with this weight at the, while at the same time adding more to your weight that you're carrying of the world. Now, some of the weight is very personal. Some of the weight may have hurt and some of the weight you might not be ready to give over. But at some point, acknowledge that you have a weight. God, you know what? I do have this particular thing. Okay, God, look, 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 look. Check it out, God. This is what I'll do. I'm ready to give over which department or oh, this department. No, not, not, not this department. I won't go in that department, but I'll go in this big one right here, God, because this is the big one I can go into. But not, not, not this one. I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And so we'll go over. Oh. Ooh, the, okay, God, I, I can give you this. We'll, I'll, we'll trade this one to you. God, I'll trade this one to you as well. God, oh, I'm going to put that. I'm not ready for that, God. And definitely my finances. Oh, that's mine, God. I'm, I'm not ready for that, but I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll, I'll give you that. And so we have that's what we do. We give certain things over to the Lord and certain things we want to deal with. But at some point, just like in that skit, I said, I'm not ready to deal with that. At some point, you have to acknowledge, God, help me with that. Help me to be ready. Help me to give that over to you and not to fight tug and war. Help me to give it to you. I remember when 
my mother passed away. 2013. And so there were some things I just wasn't ready. I was hurting. I was hurting. And I wasn't ready to give over certain things. I remember just one physical thing. She had a bag and she ran a daycare here in town. And I wasn't ready to deal with certain things. And there was a bag that, you know, helping out and being over some of her business or her affairs. I was power of attorney over her, her business. And so I kept up with all her medical documents. I kept up with all her, all her Medicaid stuff. I kept up with all that. And so some things I just didn't want to look at. Why? Because it reminded me of the loss. And her bag of daycare stuff, I just it was like a, remember what it, it was like a, a orange or blue or hot pink or green. It was like a lot of different stripes and there was stuff inside the bag. It was like a gift bag. And we might still have that today. But I've gone through it. I've gone through it. And so, but it took some time. It took some time and I have to ask the Lord. And so we're able to process healing. It's a process, but I have to give that over to the Lord and say, God, okay, now I'm ready to deal with this. I need you to help me with this, Father. And so baggage, it's important that we give those things over to the Lord and lay it on his throne. I will say this, a part of my healing is for a while, like my sister was, uh, she was talking to me. We were just talking, conversing with siblings maybe a couple years back. And she, she said, was talking about something that when she said, yeah, so when, cause mama's dead and I had to, and she was just talking, I'm like, whoa, that phrase right there. I wasn't ready to hear that phrase. I know my mom had died and it took me a while to say that. What I would say was transitioned because yeah, she's on here. She's no longer on earth, but she's transitioned to her next walk with the Lord. That's the way I would phrase it. Because there, this sounds just it's a little bit more hurtful and uh, harsh. So I would say, I mean, she transitioned, but my, but she said, "Mama was dead." I know, Mama's. I'm like, wow. Okay, I wasn't ready to hear that word. So it took me a while. Well, the reality of it on Earth, she is dead, but I know she's alive in heaven. And so I had to ask, Lord, help me to work with that word. I don't want to be mad at her because she used a word that was right for her. That's her. That's how she's dealing with it. But I didn't like that word. That word wasn't pleasing to my ears. And so I had to ask God, God, help me deal with that. And so he has, because it's the truth of the matter. She's not living on this earth. She's with heaven. She's in heaven. Okay. Uh, she's transitioned. And because of her walk, because she loved the Lord, I don't, I know where my mom, where she's at. She's with the father to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. And so just having to process, I'm just talking about how I process some things along the way, but asking the Lord to help me, even when things in the bag was heavy and I didn't want to deal with just yet. Amen. So speaking about Exodus 34, verse six. Ah, father. Okay. Timekeeper, just tell me where we're at. Not that we're trying to rush, but just tell me where we're at. Okay. Thank you. Exodus 34 and 6. Uh, let's look above that. I just want to make sure I get like a quick recap. Let's look at verse 5. That's, that's kind of a good recap. Verse 5 says, And the Lord descended, meaning he came down to descend, means to come down. The Lord descended in the cloud. And he stood with him there, him being Moses. God stood with Moses and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Verse six. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, God, merciful and what? Gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. One version says the Lord is merciful. Go back for a second. The Lord is gracious and compassionate abundant in goodness and truth let's go to that's not what I was looking for um, but that I believe this is scripture talks about the Lord is gracious and compassionate compassion is what one that does help compassion is an emotion showing compassion. So the Lord is gracious and compassionate. 
another, I think, I know it's a song, but I think it's scripture says, slow to anger. He's rich and abundant in love and goodness and love. So we already have love as an emotion, right? So these are different emotions. Emotions. We can also add a few other emotions such as hate. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God shows hate, sorrow. And there's a couple more that we can add to this list as well. So talking about emotions. All right. So let's go to now. I hear you. I do want to make sure that we read Second Chronicles 30 and 9. Second Chronicles 39. And then we might walk. We might land. I'm not sure the Lord will tell us. Proverbs 6 is next. Second Chronicles 30 and 9. And then Proverbs 6. Okay. And then we have Second Kings 22 Shekinah. I think that'll be where we stop. So we got three more, three more scriptures for sure. Second Chronicles 30 and 9. Second Chronicles is easy. the New Testament. You have Samuel. You have the first and second Kings. Then first and second Chronicles. In the Old Testament. Yes. Thank you. Second Chronicles is in the Old Testament. And it says Second Chronicles 30 and 9. It says, for if you turn again unto the Lord. Then your fellow Israelites or your brother and your children will we will be will be shown compassion by their. Let's just read it according to what's on the screen. I was reading NIV. For if you turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that led them captive so that they shall come again unto this land. For the Lord, your God is gracious and compassionate or merciful and will not turn away his face from you. If you do what return unto him. The Lord is gracious and compassionate or merciful. He will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. It's important that we return to the Lord and stay with the Lord. Because God forbid that we may be called away from the Lord by our lust or our flesh or the demonic forces. And then while someone is back in a backslidden state, God forbid God call, comes for that person at that state. And they're out of alignment. And we talked about before, we're not walking with the Lord. If you don't have fellowship with the Lord, you have fellowship with darkness. It's either good or light. We've dealt with that before. And the Bible talks about in Matthew. Ah, let's go to Matthew 25, 41. So I, I said we were going to, but the, Matthew 25, 41. The Lord's dropped this in my spirit because I want to prove this point. And I think this would be the only scripture we read to prove this particular point. Matthew 25, 41 reading about uh, what the Bible says about those that don't walk with him. Matthew 25, 41 says, then shall he say, good job, Shekinah, then shall he say also unto them on the left, depart from me, this is those that aren't walking with the Lord, depart from me, ye cursed into where? Everlasting fire prepared for who? For the devil and his angels. The everlasting fire is prepared for the devil and his angels, but he's also telling somebody else to depart there. Those that don't walk with the Lord, he shall say, depart from me. You, you cursed into everlasting fire, the lake of fire prepared for the devil and the angels. At the end of the day, death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. That's what Revelation 20 talks about. So he says that he made hell for who? For the devil and his angels. But those that don't walk with him will be also receive that same judgment. So it's important that we walk with the Lord and live for him. And if we find ourselves out of order, we got to get back quickly and say, God, please forgive me. Don't wallow in that state. Allow God to deliver you. All right. So where were we at? Now we're at Proverbs 6. So I want to read this. Uh, this dropped in my spirit as I was studying and we're going to write this down I'm going to need your help to help read this because I want to jot some things down too Proverbs is Psalms I said Psalms <laughs> Psalms that's how you spell it <laughs> Psalms and Proverbs 6 thank you Father there we go because I was actually I was listening to this yesterday when I was cutting the grass. A lot of times I, I love cutting the grass. I don't always have the time to do it that I want, but I it's very I enjoy doing it. 
So when I cut the grass, a lot of times I listen to the Bible, audio Bible, or the Word. And so I was listening to the the Word of God. Uh, I was listening to this yesterday as, as I was mowing, and this dropped to my spirit. So, ooh, that's good, especially to what God was already already told me to talk about the wrath of God. And we're gonna get to wrath in a second. Anger. We're gonna get to that. But we're gonna talk about hate. We're gonna talk about hate. God does hate. You know what? God is love. Yes, but He also can hate. Let's read about this. In uh, Proverbs chapter six and verse sixteen, um, can we uh, can we read that? Can I have we can read it together if you can? It says, "These six things that the Lord hate, yes, seven are an abomination unto Him." So I'm going to stop for a second as we go to the next verse. So these six things the Lord hates, and yet seven there are abomination, abomination again. Perverse is something that can't stand in the presence of the Lord. He hates. There are certain sins that are abominable to him. Uh, so what's the first thing? A proud look. Okay, that's number one. Pride or a proud look. What's number two? A lying tongue. So those that lie. I don't know about you, but I've lied before. I had a lying tongue. God did not like that. Yes, and the hands that shed what? Innocent blood. Hands shedding innocent blood. Can, that can be hands shedding uh, shed innocent blood. Also murder. Yes, shed, hands shed innocent blood. Blood. Murder. Four. A heart that devises what? Uh, devising wicked imaginations, scheming, just scheming, plotting on people, devising wicked imaginations, thinking evil, evil intentions. What's number five? Okay. Quick to run to mi mischief. Uh, number six. False witness, that's lying on folk. There's been people that have been paid to lie and be a false witness on the stand in, in courts. That's what false witness, someone that's paid, that's, that's lying, just to lie, to, for they have gain out of it. And is there a final one? Yes. And he that what? A sower of discord. Hmm. Huh. So, so let's read it. it says, so God, it says, said there's six things the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination unto the Lord, a proud look, a lying tongue. You can zoom in if you need to. I'm not sure if you do, but you figure that out back there, um, sound team. Hands that shed innocent blood, or another word for that is murder. Uh, devising wicked imaginations, quick to run to mischief, a false witness and sower of dis uh, sower of discord. When I was reading that, when I was listening to that, and then I was when I was rereading that, I thought about a country. What country do you think that immediately rose on top? Ding 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 ding! In my mind, when I thought about a country that is doing all these things, yeah, yeah, America, America, come here, America. America, United States, as we said before, uh, as the Bible says in Revelation 17, 18, Babylon the Great. All right, Babylon the Great. So America, there's judgment coming to America because the Lord hates what America has been doing. And so uh -huh. as we get ready to go to 2 Kings chapter 22, this will tie in. So if you've been part of doing something that or if you've been caught in doing something or if your family been doing something, as we shared before with Daniel, was it Daniel chapter number 10 or 11? I think it was 11, Father. Don't go there. Or you can if you want to. I'm not going to tell you what not to do. But we're not going to read it. I just want to make sure. 
Daniel and Daniel we talked about how he repented on behalf of his forefathers and foremothers. He repented on behalf of Israel. He said, God, I know why we're going through. I know why we're in slavery because we've neglected your law. We've gotten away from what you called us to do. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Is that it? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, that's 10. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, uh, that's what Daniel did. So uh, I believe it's in chapter 10 or 11. But anyway, he repented on behalf of his nation. Even when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm not going to go deep into that, but when we look at that, we could, people wake up and say, oh God, okay, we're these people of the book. I know why we've gone through X, Y, and Z, because we transgress your laws, your commandments, and have not done what you called us to do. So when we're, we're in America. We're living in America right now. Something that we can do is to repent for the sins of our country. Doesn't mean that God's not going to judge this country, because he is. He will. He has to. But we can still repent. You don't have to come daily to do it, but you can, God, please forgive me for my sins and my family, my lineage that may have had a, first of all, I want to forgive you personally. If, when I've had a proud look, I'm sorry, Father. When I've lied, God, please forgive me. God, when my hands were, I was quick to try to uh, think evil for, for somebody in my head. God, I want to, I wish they were dead. Please forgive me for that, Father. God, because uh, hopefully no one has murdered anybody. If you have, ask God to forgive you. Um, devising wicked imaginations, thought evil towards people, were quick to go, go do the wrong stuff, right? Oh, what are we going to get in tonight? Y'all, make sure you, this is about to pop off. Make sure you call me, man, because I want to be a part of that. Oh, we're about to roll up on somebody. Make sure you call me, man, right? Quick to run to mischief, false witness, sower of discord. So some of us have actually done this, but also this has been in our lineage and our family, so you can repent of that. But also our country has been guilty of doing this. Okay, God does not like that. Uh, let's go to, we're going to go to first Kings, second Kings chapter 22. If you're taking notes, you can jot this down for a second. Something that you want to just, I'm going to throw a curve at you for a second. Uh, where is that father? All right. I hear you. Second Kings 22. Malachi. We're not going to go here, but Malachi chapter one, one through three, brother Troy talks about God says, Jacob, I loved. Esau, I hated. So, oh. But some people say, well, God didn't really hate them. He just loved them less. He said it right here that he hated them. <laughs> so why is that? You can kind of dig into that. But all that to say that God shows emotions. He has emotions. He's not just love. And God, and love is not just, oh, we love God. No, you chasten those whom you love. You speak the truth in love. You reward those who you love, right? God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So he gives good things to his children. Hey, great job. Just like a parent would do. We bless our children. We give good things to them. How much more our heavenly father, right? There's a parable that speaks about that. About if we then, being good, know how to give good things to our children, how much more will our heavenly father give good things to those who deserve it? As we close, so that was just a curveball for you to consider. Malachi 1 through 3, as it talks about Esau I love, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Trivia, we know God loves Jacob. What did, God, what did Jacob's name get, get changed into? Israel. And there were how many tribes came from Israel? Twelve, right? And these are the descendants that God's hand was upon them that Jesus came from the twelve tribes of Israel. For bonus points, what tribe did Jesus derive from? Judah. Judah. Ding, 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 ding. Correct. If you got that, you get a hundred bonus points. All right. Yes. So he loved Esau, a Jacob tribe, right? He Jacob I love because he was a beaten, but Esau sold his birthright. And we can kind of get into that. That's a whole other teaching into that. I'm gonna stop there. But that's for to dig further into. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Good to see you, brother Ted. Amen. And so as we look at that, let's look at the final. Let's look at the final scripture. Second, uh, second, 20, uh, second, 22, second Kings. Thank you. Because I have a whole like paper. But I'm just trying to land now. Uh, second Kings. Verse. Twenty two. 
And Shekinah, what did, where did I tell you to start? Um, verse, 14. verse 14. Amen. So 2 Kings, I, 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 it, I think it's our last scripture. We'll see how the Lord leads, but I think we're landing. So Hilkiah the priest and Ahakam and Abkor, Ab, sorry, Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam uh -huh, and Achbor and Shaphan and Asiah went unto Hulda the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva. These are not names y'all you see every day, right? All right. So they basically, so these priests went unto the prophetess, right? That's basically what that's saying. The son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college and they communed with her. That's an interesting word, right? That's just the college. May not mean what we mean today, but that's just interesting right there, okay? So you can look that, look that up if you need to. And they commune with her. What does she say? So the, the, what's happening? The God has given a word. They went to seek a word from the Lord, and the word was sent through a woman of God, a prophetess named Harhas, or sorry, the uh, Hulda. And verse 15, what did she say? What did God speak through her? And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of who? Of Israel, or Jacob, the Lord God of Israel. Tell the man that sent you to me. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring uh -oh, evil upon this place. That's not a good word, but that's the word of the Lord, right? I'd rather, if I'm out of line, I want God to tell me I'm out of line than get caught by surprise and have no repercussion. I want God to warn me. If I'm doing wrong, God tell me so I can fix it. Because if he judged me for, before I can fix it, guess what? What Matthew 25, 41 says that my judgment is like with the devil and his angels and the lake of fire. I don't want that. So God tell me if I'm wrong so I can fix it. Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. Continue. So the evil's going to be coming into the land. Why is God bringing evil upon the land? He'll tell you. Because they have done what? Forsaking him. They have forsaken me and had done what? Had burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke God to anger with all the works of their hands. So the, what they were doing was not pleasing unto the Lord. Therefore, what's that word say right there? My wrath. Today we're talking about the wrath of God as we're ending. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Mm. All right. Is there one more? Okay, that's, that's what we want to stop before right now. So God, the word of God came to them as they were seeking God because they have forsaken. Uh, we're looking at first Kings because they have forsaken the Lord. They left him. Hey, family, this is this is so important. If you walked away from God. If there's breath in your body and if you're hearing this word today, you can come back to God because when you forsake God, evil is is waiting at your door and there is consequences for uh that god when you god backs up and you think you're living a good life but you may be living a good life but not a godly life a good life is not a godly life well i'll live good i've done x y and z i've done x y and z but have you surrendered your heart to him have you repented of your sins not just once because some people say once saved always saved bro no nah, that's not correct you got to stay saved. The Bible talks about he that endures to the end shall be saved. So endure to the end, to the end of your time, to the end of your race. Can't you keep running? Yeah, you may stump, stumble. Yeah, you may falter. Yeah, you might even step outside the lines and be disqualified for a second. But don't just pout and walk off the race. Get back in there. I remember I was running a, a, a track. Uh, good morning, sir. Good to see you. I was running in track and I was, brother, I was about 17, no, 17. My senior year, my junior year, I was doing hurdles. I thought I was good. I thought I was hot stuff. And to be honest, I was decent. I wasn't the fastest person. I, didn't, I never, ever came in first place. Never. But I was, I, I was near the top, right? And so uh, one race, I think I got a lot of third medals. But one time I was running the 300 meters hurdles and they said run the sea mark the olympics right it's right about now so this is a fitting story so get set raise up bah! i take off right i was running i was running 
And when you run track, you, it's like you're striding. You have to have your steps down, right? And so my first hurdle came, I'm like, Ooh, what? I won't feel that tomorrow because God's going to heal me, right? And so I was running, and the first hurdle, I was going under the door. So I was, uh, right? First hurdle, I was good. Second hurdle, I got it. The third hurdle, my trail leg, because when I go over, my trail leg wasn't parallel. My foot was down, so it caught the third hurdle, and I stumbled. And then I think the fourth, fourth my steps were all because I stumbled. The fourth hurdle, I fell over the hurdle. And everyone went past me. Because I was up there. I, was, I, I thought I was at least in second place at, at that time in the race. But people went past me. When you fall down, don't walk off the track and throw, throw your towel. Well, I messed up. I might as well go live, do what I want to do. I might as well put all this hard work in. I messed up, but I might as well go off the track and not run again. No. If, if you forsaken God, come back to him. Get back in the race and get back up again. Amen. So I wasn't raised to be a quitter or to walk off the race. That was not in me. So what I did, little did I know I'll be telling the story 30 years later. But I get back up. Well, 20 something years later, I'm not. Anyway, I get back up and I started running again. Thank you. And I, I, I was off, but I was getting it, right? My stride was off. And then pretty soon, I got that stride back. I got that stride back and I was going, I was going. Tell you what, I didn't come in last place. I didn't come in first place. I didn't have a place, <laughs> but I didn't come in last. And I got back up. What the Lord wants us to do, if you've forsaken him and you might have fallen down, get back up again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you was when you were throwing right, or yes, and the time she kind of fell, she was uh, the thing this past season. She was uh, you were doing discus, I mean shot put discus. She was doing discus and she fell, but she got back up again and competed. She didn't cry. She didn't uh, walk off. She did what she needed to do. Yeah, they give the option. You want to walk away? No, I'm good. I want to. I want to finish this. Don't walk away from God. Finish this. Doesn't matter the adversity you're facing. Doesn't matter what surprise and sneak attack may come your way. What's a sneak attack? Something you didn't expect? A big blow that catches you off guard? Where'd that come from? Playing football, they used to have a term called crackback. Those weren't nice. Uh, I, I one, I would de initiate a crack back sometimes. I'll come back. Oh, it's not looking. Let me go get him. I want to make sure that I don't hit him in the back. But I'm gonna bah, knock him over. He's not looking. And there were sometimes as a receiver, I played receiver where I was running or blocking, and I was I was looking at the play, but somebody would come hit me on the side, and I didn't even see them. Those can be sneak attacks, and that happens in life where things will hit you, and you're not ready for it. You were not even expecting it. Blindsided. Keep your focus. Even if the wind is knocked out of you like it was. <laughs> but get back up again and focus and run for him. The Bible says, because they have forsaken me, Second Chronicles, Second Kings 22, and have burned incense, meaning they were worshiping and incense is significant or praying. We talked about that in Revelation. Does it smoke come as an incense? They are praying to other gods. Like they're doing, the, showing the case in the Olympics and not praying to other gods, celebrating other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works. Therefore, his wrath is kindled. So, when you think about the question, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Thanks for, thank y'all for telling me. That means you love me. I appreciate that. Pastor, there was something on your lip the whole time, and I didn't want to tell you because you're on camera. No, nah, tell me, please. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Uh, I mean, y'all, y'all love me. Uh, and if you didn't tell me, that's okay. I know you love me. All right, love the love the Lord. So, what we, what are we saying here? The question that we raised earlier that says, "Why did God wipe out the whole earth with a flood? Why did God?" Slaughter, have the Israelites slaughter the Je Je Jebusites and the Girgashites and the Hittites and all those ites in Deuteronomy chapter 5. 
Well, Leviticus chapter 20 tells you the reason. Chapter 18 and chapter 21 tells you the reason. Because they were in perverseness. They were walking in perverseness. They were doing the evil things that America <laughs> is doing today. Why did God, why does God allow the angels to bring judgment in Revelation? Because essentially we've forsaken him. People have forsaken them and worshiping other gods. And now there's wrath that the God of God of anger and that his wrath that that's because his anger is burning. Because we provoked him, people have provoked him to wrath and anger. By how? Forsaking him. Just to sum it up, God is love, but He hates sin. Thank you. Yes. So to put a bowl on things as Pastor Mary is saying so I can sit down. <laughs> she says to sum it up. Uh, God is love, but he does not like sin. He hates sin. And so sin, the wages of sin is death and sin brings judgment. OK, so make sure that you're walking with the Lord. Uh, if you have questions, well, why does God allow this to happen? Because of sin, ultimately. OK. All right, so God is love, but God will speak the truth in love. God is love, but God will chasten those who we love. God is love, but God will correct, okay, and give us an opportunity to get it right. And we have to choose whether we accept it or not. All right, amen. Father, what's next? We're going to pray, and then we're going to have uh, 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 Pastor Mary will come dismiss us. Thank you, Father. Father, what do we do? Amen. We're just going to pray um, and we're going to, to uh, invite Pastor Mary up. Father, we thank you for this time. She kind of, can you play some um, dappy keys? Uh, we thank you for this time, Father, that we've had to share in your word. God, we ask you to continue to hide the word in our heart that we may not sin against you, Father. We thank you for your love. Thank you for your word, Father, and thank you for hiding us in your word. Thank you for loving us enough to correct us, Father, and to tell us what's right and what's wrong. God, we understand that you are a God of emotions. You have emotions. You're not just a God of love. You are love. That's period. You are love. And love is just, does not just predicate how America defines it. But God, we define love through your word. And God, we shared some scriptures, scriptures about your word today, how you speak the truth, how we speak the truth in love how you chasten those who you love, how you're compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love, and how God also, because of sin, your anger can be aroused and there's consequences behind that. If we've done anything wrong, if we've sinned and we have not asked to, you to forgive us, please forgive us, Father. This is a good time that if you've done anything wrong and you have not asked God to forgive you, you can just talk to the Lord even now. Thank you, Lord. Father, please forgive me for anything I've done wrong. We thank you, Father, for just having your way that we're gladly receiving your word today. Father, we're in right fellowship with you. Think that we're getting back into right alignment. And if you don't know Christ, if you maybe you've been away for some time. It's not easy, but it's simple. It's as simple as A, B, C. A is to admit that you have sinned that you have transgressed God's commands and we all have at some point B is to believe in Jesus the Christ to believe that he died on the cross for your sin hey, Roshata. to believe that he died for you and that God sent his son that he loved us so much that he sent his son so we can be redeemed so we can be back in right relationship to see, confess Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And also in there is a believe, a to admit that you've sinned, to repent. Not only to admit that you sinned, but to tell him sorry, to repent, and to turn away from your sin. Then B, believe that Jesus is just to forgive you, that he died on the cross for you. And to confess him as Lord, to live for him. How do we live for him? By walking out the word, by getting into the word by not going back to the sin or to the vomit that we came from. If you find yourself going back to that vomit, that sin, that old life, you have to be in God's face. You have to want to leave. I've, I've been in sin before. I've been in addiction before. 
And it's not easy. It's actually pretty challenging. I don't want to say hard, but it's very sometimes very challenging to, to get loose of. But that's where you ask the Lord to deliver you because we cannot do it ourselves. Amen. Father, please deliver us from any sin that might try to still try to entangle us. Follow fresh in us, Father. Yes. Thank you for setting us free through your power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for delivering us, Father God. Thank you for providing a way of escape. Thank you that for allowing us to become right in fellowship with you. Because God, we know the word of God says it's terrible. To, it's, all, uh, uh, it's not good to fall into the hands of an angry God. God, we want to walk pleasing up right before you. Thank you that you are just to forgive us. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Peace, I talk. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for his presence in this house. Whatever you stand in need of, you can receive for today to receive the strength and the healing. The exchange for whatever you came in carrying. You don't have to walk out carrying the same load. God, even those that are watching online or they may have tuned in, but they had to, to, to go off for whatever reason. Have you weigh God in them, Father. In their situations, Father. God, we see you at work. And for, God, for that, God, we give you praise. We give you praise, God. I, I want to see that we see the small things. As we talked about Wednesday, there are some small things that are big things that have happened today. And we see you. Yes, and we give you praise. Yes, Bless the men. There's some members that are in uh, Puerto Rico right now, Father. <laughs> have your way in them as they have vacation time. Yes. We thank you for providing for them and taking care of their home and giving them peace where they're at. Thank you for restoring relationships. Thank you for mending. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we're going to bring my wife up, Pastor Mary. Uh, don't forget, if the Lord's moved on your heart to give, giving is an amazing thing. Well, God, I may not have it this time. Okay, then you can't give it this time. But if God's put on your heart to give, we can give through Cash App and through our physical offering here as well. Uh, we're just glad to have everybody here in the house of God. And I was questioning, I was like, God, what's your word? And I hear some things, but it's not for me to release at this time. But we're just so happy that, that uh, you're here. And this is one of those times now I have to stop talking because I, I, I'm in a good place right now. So we give God the glory and honor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, we are getting ready to dismiss. Um, but I want to encourage those that are watching online, um, maybe not those that are out of state, but those of you who are in the vicinity of Lockhart, Texas, whether you live in Lockhart or the surrounding areas, because I do know some of you all watch from Luling, Lockhart, San Marcos, Dale, um, the surrounding areas, Austin. And I encourage you to get into the house, the physical house of the Lord. Um, yes, the Lord can move where you're at, at home or at work or wherever you're watching. But when you can make it to the house of God, because with other believers, you walk away strengthened with other believers. It says that iron sharpens iron and we ought not to um, forget to fellowship with one another. And so in order for us to continue to um, 
build and mature, we ought to be in the presence of our fellow brothers and sisters to help us be encouraged and to say, to be able to see that you are not in this walk alone. So I encourage you to get to the house of God when you can. Um, But at this time, we are coming together and we are going to dismiss. If we could just stand to our feet. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for um, the word that was spoken on today, God. We thank you for how you have opened up your word to us, God, as we have been diving deeper into revelation. Father, you have given us more and more wisdom, God. Father, you are continuing to mature the saints of God in this place, God, and we just thank you. We thank you for the outpouring of wisdom and knowledge that you have given us, God. Lord, we don't take that for granted. Father, And Lord, help us to take the word, God, and tuck it in our hearts, God, that we would not sin against you, God, but help us to reflect on the things that were shed that were um, talked about on today God for those uh, things that were shared father help us to remember the word God to go back and study the word to show ourselves approved God and father God is we leave this place God but never your presence we ask that you go before us keep us safe and sound God father God I ask that you encamp your angels around about us as we leave this place God and up until the next appointed time time God and father even as the man of God of this house God I thank you that you are continuing to share your revelatory knowledge on him God that you're continuing to speak to him father God we pray strength back into his body even now God with everything that um, he poured out this morning the word that he studied um, the time that he took to study God I thank you that you are restoring him even now in the name of Jesus now father God I thank you God that your word is steadfast in us God and father God as we speak the ironic blessing over your people we say that the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace amen and amen say this with me arise and shine shine. for the light is come come. and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you you. amen consider yourselves dismissed god bless you greet each other in the name of the lord no bible study this wednesday no bible study this wednesday